when we, we know how to say the right thing, yes. even when it's a challenge. We know how to love even when it hurts. We know how to do that amongst ourselves in the body of Christ. However, there is a challenge before us in this last hour. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yes, there is a challenge. Uh, when we, we hear statistics, alarming statistics, uh, such as uh, the, the high incidence, the ever-increasing number of suicides or, yes, or sir. Potential, yes, sir. potential suicides among young men, in particular yes. between the ages yes. of 18 and 24, yes. we come to realize that there is a challenge, and there uh, not only a challenge, but there is a very serious problem that's facing us, particularly as people of color. Yes, yes. sir. Our seed, somebody say seed. seed. Our seed is being corrupted emotionally, psychologically, socially. Our seed yes. is being damaged before it has a chance to be a healthy or fruitful entity. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. And unfortunately, with all the love that we can shower on one another, all the love that we have for God, uh, it almost sounds heretical, but the truth of the matter is somehow it doesn't quite seem to be enough. Yeah. What are we saying? It's good to, to tell people you need Jesus. Yeah. It's good to tell people pray. It's good to tell people get to Bible study. But how many of you know that we live in a complex world where people are asking the question, I hear you, but I need you to give me some substance. Show me how I can get straight. Show me how I can get this monkey off my back. Show me how I can get out of this sense of pervasive hopelessness that has me mired in darkness and depression. Help me to get out of this funk, if you will. I hear what you're saying, but I can't seem to see my way out of this place. And not only young boys, but as a result, our young women are finding themselves, giving themselves away in order to be so because of this sense of hopelessness. Jesus. They don't have a sense of who they are. Ergo, my first word, uh, the first word, affirmation. Come on. If there was ever a time to demonstrate true love, it must come in the form of affirmation, or rather affirming the value, yeah. the inherent value in one another. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. What am I talking about? Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that we co-sign everything that folks do. But we must make it our business to affirm folks and give them a sense of value. Give one another a sense of value, a reason why they ought to get up in the morning, a reason why they ought to strive a little harder, a reason why there is a hope that lies within them because of the hope that lies within them. Let me go to the text. Paul and Silas, mm -hmm. missionary, mm -hmm. find themselves led by the Holy Spirit to a pagan environment called Philippi. Mm -hmm. And here in Philippi, folks are making a living off of demonic activity. All right, come on, sir. Not too different than how we're living today. There yeah, are demonic yeah. activity yeah. all around us. Folks yeah. are profiting. Mm -hmm. uh, folks are making commerce of, of the, the misfortunes of others. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Paul and Silas come to town and they come to town preaching Jesus yeah. and him crucified. Mm -hmm. you, you know the story that. Folks are getting changed. Folks are getting saved. Yes. Things are happening in Philippi that have never happened before. Lydia was over there, and, and, and we, we, we know the story. Nevertheless, there was a young lady who was overwhelmed by a demonic spirit. Yes. And she's following Paul and Silas throughout town. Everywhere they went preaching, 
she went around affirming them, so to speak. Understand sometimes, this is just an off note, but understand sometimes that everyone that affirms something that God said does not necessarily mean that they come from God in their affirmation of what God said. That's just an aside. Be careful who you rub shoulders with. Uh, I just felt like you need somebody needs to get that. Nevertheless, the spirit is blubbering all over town. That's Paul. He's a man of God. That's right. That's what Paul said. That's a man of God. But she was actually being used by the authorities for their problems. Mm -hmm. Paul got tired of the foolishness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know every now and then it gets to a point where we enough of the dumb stuff. You read it, if, if I'm on this street, just 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 raise your index finger. There come a point in time, you know, about about who we know we gotta be about God's business. We don't have time for the dumb stuff. Turn somebody and say we don't have time for the dumb stuff. Paul and Silas said, look, we're, we're here on assignment. We're, we're here to turn things upside down for Jesus Christ. We don't have time for this foolishness. I don't need no parent over my shoulder. I know who I am in God. Be, be, be done with you, spirit. And so Paul spoke God and cast out the spirit. Mm -hmm. Not the story of the but I'm telling you to set you up in case you forgot. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, he upset the balance of the economy of the Philippian city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In doing so, he took money out of somebody's pocket. All right, all right. In doing so, he messed somebody's home up. Mm -hmm. Enter verse 21. Mm -hmm. The town people said, okay, mm -hmm. we got something for you. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. So they took Paul and Silas and they stripped them of Clothes and the Bible says it says they beat them with rods. Listen to this, so go this morning. Beat them with rods, Jay. Why? For sharing the gospel. Oh. Draw their clothes off. Why? For sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Beat them with many stripes and then threw them in prison. Right. Let me just share with you. They didn't go to Middlesex County Correct. Oh. They didn't have three meals in the cop. Right. Didn't have a college tuition program. Come on here. Didn't get a chance to live, wait, and watch TV. Okay. No exercise room. No air conditioning. Come on here. They lived in squalor, chained up by guards, yeah. expecting to die yeah. in the morning. Yeah. I'm getting to yeah. love, just bear with me. All right. They were preparing to die. But in the midst of their preparation to die, they understood that they haven't died yet and they still had a reason to live. So even in the midst of impending doom, they found themselves singing songs to God in the midnight hour. How many of you, even though you drive yourself up against the wall, how great is our God? How many you found yourself, even when things look the bleakest, find yourself just giving God the highest praise, even so you know the picture doesn't look good, but God, it's for you I live, and for God I give you glory. That's right. In the dungeon, I, I wish, I wish this generation could get a picture of it. We have a hard time lifting up God with air conditioning and fans. That's right, that's right. And the video going and the pews are cushioned and got the tambourine. And we have a hard time giving God praise, watching the clock. But these folks in the midnight hour, in the mud and the squalor and the rats and the stink, still said it might be that around me, but I can't be concerned with what's going on around me because of something. Worship, worship is not 
always what's convenient. No, it's not. But it is what's right. Yes. 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 Turn to somebody and tell them, it may not always be convenient, yes. but it's right. Yes. Yes. Right. So the Bible says that as they worshiped, God used them to create an earthquake, Glory. a seismic shift. All right, all right. Go ahead, sir. Occurred because of the worship of two men tied to some burly, mean spirit. <laughs> <laughs> and the foundations of the prison were shaken. And, uh, and immediately, immediately, oh, let me just give you another one for free if you don't mind. If you want some things loosened in your life, if you got some, some folk in your life that need to be loose, if you got some doors that you need to be open, if you got some things that you just want loose today, might I recommend praise and worship to our God, not concerned with who thinks what about? Go ahead. Everyone's chains were loose. Come on, come on. The Bible says everyone's chains were loose. Everybody. And the prisoner. The keeper of the prison, awakened from his sleep, came yeah. out, seeing the prison doors open, uh, supposing the prisoners fled. Judas swore that was about to kill himself. Understand that he under he understood that his responsibility was to make sure that those prison prisoners were delivered to their death in the morning. Right now, his livelihood was on the line. Yes. It meant his life if he was not successful in delivering Paul and Simon. Yes. Come on. So much so that he said, if I can't deliver the prisoners, right. I might as well kill myself because somebody else will. All right. All right. How many, talk about hopelessness, how many folks on our watch Wake up in the morning and sense within himself it makes no sense to even bother trying to live. Life is not worth living. I might as well take my life. There are folks, whether they're 8 or 80, that every day we see them functioning, but deep down inside there is an inherent struggle. And only reason I'm here is because I haven't found a way to get out of here. That's true, sir. I had to rip the I had to rip this dialogue. Go ahead. Because as we talked over breakfast, I realized the severity. If we're really gonna talk about love and be the church that love and really demonstrate love and show the love of God that was given to us so that the world can Behold, we got to get down to some grass tops. We're living with people that are walking around like zombies. And the only reason they're still here is they haven't found a way to get out of here. Right, Our babies. Glory. That's right, sir. Go to bed at night figuring out a way. Yeah. If I can only get a hold of this, I can get out of here. All right. Our young boys. If I can get my hands on a weapon, I can end it. Yeah. If I take the right drug, I can end it. Mm -hmm. And that wouldn't be bad enough, but you know what they're doing? They're saying, I'm not only going to leave if I can, but I'm taking somebody with me. Come on now. Costco's last night in California. Mm. Columbine in Colorado. Mm. Orlando, Florida, and the list goes on and on and on. It uh, really comes from a seed of hopelessness. Yes. How do we circumvent this spirit of hopelessness yes. here in the text? Paul and Silas, even though they have been beaten, mm. even though they have been stripped of their clothes and their dignity, mm -hmm. even though they were berated for just living the life of godly men and women. Mm -hmm. They could have taken the opportunity to say, look, this is what you get. Mm -hmm. 
Touch not, you know how it's church folk do. Touch not God's anointed, do his prophet no harm. Whatever happens to you, happens to you because you shouldn't have messed with me. But no, true love says that even though I got this, I'm not going to repay you in kind. What you need is the three words. You need, number one, affirmation. Yeah. Huh? You need affirmation. You're on the wrong side of right. Mm. But you still have that. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Let that simmer for you. Yeah. How many of you have children that they may be on the wrong side of right? Mm. But they still have that. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you have spouses or in-laws or neighbors or, or co-workers that, that they may be on the wrong side of right? but they're still human beings and they still have value. And if you're going to win them over for Christ, if you're going to win them over for their own sake, you must first affirm them for who they are as human entities. Come on. Hallelujah. Doesn't say that you co-sign their stuff. If they're wrong, they're wrong. But they're wrong and their inherent humanity are two different things. Right. We've got to learn to differentiate between the two as we were coming into town. Uh, Sister Law may have mentioned I've been trying my best to ignore it just to keep my blood pressure down. You know, you, know, you, know, you get old, you get old. You know. So, but when we came into town, and she goes, they got their flag up. And I'm just thinking to myself, you know, because I'm thinking sermon. I'm saying, what's she talking about? They and their flag. But then not when I saw the, the, the colors, and then we turned the corner, and now we didn't see just one flag. We saw flags lined up all along Main Street. There's a, there's a flag right across the street on the hotel. What am I saying is, is that even though they're on the wrong side of right, even though now that spirit is pervasive in our culture, and everybody's celebrating pride uh -huh. that, that, that may be on the wrong side of right, but I believe if we begin to not look at their activity and look right. at them as potential souls for the kingdom. All right, that's right, that's right. They may be wrong. I'm not saying they're right. I'm not, not going to co-sign that. However, they are human beings. They are souls in need of a savior. Yeah, yeah. And, and where their position comes from a place. I'm not going to get into the psychological ramifications and the implications of who said it all and I'm not here for that. But at the end of the day, they're just like this jailer, they needed something yeah. that, that those who had it had the right and the responsibility to share. Amen. Paul and Silas said this, first of all, in affirmation. Look, do yourself no harm. Amen. We're all here. We're all here. We're all here. In other words, don't kill yourself. If you could use our old vernacular in this day, it's just not that serious, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chill, we're here. Yeah. We're here. Now, how far does that go when someone is on the precipice of ending? How far does do yourself no harm life is worth living? And I, I just want to interpret that. Basically, Paul was saying, don't kill yourself. We're, we're not going where we're all here. Affirmation. What that jailer needed at that moment, he knew he was wrong. Mm -hmm. He knew he was on the wrong side of right. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, might I tell you, it doesn't do us any good to browbeat folk. Because mm -hmm. yeah. the truth of the matter is, folk already know. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Folk already know whether they'll admit it or not is one thing, but they don't need us to remind them that they're wrong. What they need us to remind them is that there's a better way. That's right. There's another way. Turn to somebody, high five somebody, and say, thank God we know that there's a better way. Then as a result of that, look what happened. As a result of receiving a word that would inspire, there's the other word, inspiration, inspire him to hang in there. Yeah. The jailer goes and gets a light, and he comes in and opens the door, 
fall and silence to minister. And then what's the next thing that comes out of the jailer's mouth? Mm -hmm. yeah. Not it wasn't for you. Come on. He didn't go there. Mm -hmm. Because of the worship, because of the praise, because of the affirmation that was afforded the, uh, the jailer, the jailer responds out of a sense of gratitude and understanding that he just could have, could have well ended his life. He said, what must I do to have eternal life? Here is a man who is steeped. You must get this, folks. Here's a man who's steeped in a pagan culture. His word suggests that the Holy Spirit was able to permeate even his cultural yeah. dysfunction, if you will. Yeah. What must I do to be saved? Yeah. Not what must I do to be religious. Right. Not what must I do to keep from getting in trouble tomorrow morning. Yeah. Right. What must I do to be saved? Hallelujah. Beloved, I submit to you that our responsibility in demonstrating love for God and love for one another and love to the others is putting folks in a position where they ask the question, what must I do yes. to be saved? Yes. It begs the question, or rather it reveals something about the nature of Paul and Silas that, that, and, and something about the spiritual IQ of the the prison guard, because obviously the prison guard was able to see that there was an answer to the question that Paul and Silas had. Mm -hmm. Can we just say that again? Yes. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the jailer figured that Paul had the answer, or else he wouldn't have asked the question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What questions are people asking of you? What questions do you wish people would ask you? What love, degree of love emanates from you that causes people to ask you the most profound questions? How do I get out of this mess? How do I turn my life around? How can I get this monkey off my back? How can I have a better life? How can I be a better man? How can I be, can I talk to the fathers for a minute? How can I be a better son? How can I be a better man? How can I be a better husband? How can I be a better provider? How can I be a better worshiper? Uh, somebody is asking the question whether you hear it or not. There's something going around. All we have to do is fine tune our spiritual hearing because the cries are being emitted everywhere. How do I get saved from this or that? Or saved to this? We must be able, out of the love that we receive, give folks a reason for the hope that lies within us and that same hope that we have. It comes down to affirming even our enemies. Right. Affirming even our enemies. There in the text. And in doing so, providing an opportunity for the Holy Spirit yes. to massage hearts. Yes. And when hearts become massaged, it puts us in a position Number two, and I'm almost finished. Inspiration. What happens next? After the question, what must I do to be saved? It opened the door for Paul and Silas to inspire the jailer Thank you, to give his life to Jesus. Amen. Did it? It inspired him to don't, don't kill yourself. There's hope. There's hope. We don't inspire folks to hang in there for tomorrow. We won't have one. Inspire them. This is the way to salvation. Yes. But it starts by first affirmation. I can park there. I can park there all afternoon. We must do a better job of 
serving one another as she did. That will in fact open the door for an opportunity to inspire people to live for their today, for their tomorrow, for their family. And in doing so, the last item, I take my seat, impartation. What did they do? They took the time to impart the word of truth. Yeah. You affirm, you inspire, and then you impart. Yeah. Notice they didn't make any excuses for the jail, but we did affirm them. We got to learn the balance. I can affirm you and at the same time inspire you, but then even within that, my job is to provide a holy impartation. Yeah. So that I want to what's poured in you that was poured into me. There it is, I take my seat. We must understand that our job as the body of Christ is to pour out of us that which has been poured into us. Yeah. Let me say it again. When God, because God has poured into us, our responsibility is to pour out that which has been poured into us. As I listened to Reverend Ben, she was just saying earlier, I can't help it. Uh, uh, she, 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 her, and her and my wife were cut out of the same tree. And even though sometimes, you know, it, it kind of gets under my skin, but every now and then, but at the truth of the matter is it's just something in them to just serve. And what they're saying is, is that because of what God has poured into me, I can't help but pour it out. I can't because of what God has given to me. I know that I can't keep it to myself. It's my, am I on anybody's street? If you really have a servant's heart and a loving heart and a heart that loves God because of what God has given to you and invested in you, you want to reinvest that or re reinvest that into somebody else. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, that is love. I said all that in 20 minutes, however long it was to say. That is the essence of love. To affirm, to inspire, and to impart wisdom, the love of God, the truth of God's word to a world that is rapidly in decay. That is our job. Love, and in doing so, we demonstrate love to God, love for one another, as we work this together, we work it together because we love one another. And in doing so, we love the others. Amen. Don't forget to love the others. As I close, we don't have to like everything, but we are commanded to love. Amen. We don't have to agree with everything, but we are commanded According to the scriptures, First John 4, 21, John 13, John 14, we are commanded to love. Although we may not like the situation, hate the sin, love the sin. Amen. Turn to your neighbor. His head is bowed and eyes are closed. Turn to your neighbor. Grab my hand. As we begin to pray, I'm thanking God for the move of the Holy Spirit that will cause us to abandon all the notice in lieu of listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We are in crisis. Our children are in crisis mode. Our seniors are our little girls are in crisis. Our little boys are in crisis. Our seed is being corrupted on a daily basis. Our seed bearers are in jeopardy. We can make a difference because of the love that was shed on our lives through the blood of Jesus Christ. Firm one another. God, help us. Help us to affirm one another in Jesus. 
Help us to learn how to inspire one another. To make a difference. To make, to hold on. Teach us how to provide substantive impartation according to your word, God, that your people might be fed, that your people might be blessed. And those that are the others will become part of the one and other. As we love one another in God. Bless us as we prepare to go down from this place. Thank you for your word to all. Teach us the essence of love. And that is to give sacrificially like Jesus did. Yes. Like Paul and Silas did and so many did, have done and do. Even in the midst of difficult and trying circumstances. That's love. We just ask that you bless us. Strengthen us. Continue to use. 